this week on Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake Romanak put on a planer board trolling clinic, showcasing the offshore tackle side planer plus the best lures, line types, and tactics for boxing a limit of Atlantic salmon on one of northern Michigan's most beautiful inland lakes. Flag down. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Well, good morning and welcome to beautiful northern Michigan. As uh, some of you may or may not know, I've lived in northern Michigan most of my adult life, and uh, there's some cool opportunities up here. Uh, we filmed on a variety of lakes in northern Michigan, but we've never been on this one before. So, uh, a new body of water for fishing 411. Uh, but not new to us as fishermen, just new to our viewers. But, uh, we won't let the cat out of the bag just yet. But uh, inline planer boards, spoons, lead core, that's going to be the theme of the day. Oh man, this feels good. Especially to get a bite so early in the morning. Jakers, I'm going to have you give me a yeah, assist on that board. board off for you here, Dad. There you go. There you go. Excellent. Talking pretty good back there. Yeah, he is pulling pretty good. That's a beautiful thing. You can tell by the way we're dressed, it is, uh, it's cold. It's early. Early, early, early April right now. That's what we're after right there. Hey, nice fish hey. there. The object of our affections. Very cool. All right, I'm just gonna try and hang on to this guy. He's really slippery. An Atlantic salmon. There's only a couple of places in the state of Michigan where a guy can go and catch these. Uh, you can catch them up at the Sioux at the St. Mary's River. And we're on Torch Lake today in northern Michigan. And Torch Lake has been stocked many years. In fact, the world record Atlantic salmon came from Torch Lake, I believe it was in 2010, 26 pounds and change. So they do get big. This one has got a lot of growing yet to do. There we go. Atlantic salmon, Torch Lake, northern Michigan. Yeah, I got one going on the middle board here. Nice. You know, one of the things about these Atlantic salmon is they're very similar to a lot of salmon in the fact that they like to school up. And so what we're basically doing today is we're just going to cover a lot of water. We're going to troll up and down these shorelines and we're going to look for these pods of fish. And once we find them, we're going to go ahead and save a waypoint on our graph 
If you catch one or two, you definitely want to turn around and go back over those fish again. You could go a long ways before you find another pod. So try to beat up that pod of fish. You get maybe one or two bites, turn around, go back through them. Hopefully you'll get a couple more bites. By the time you go through those fish a couple times, those fish are going to disperse and then you're right back to looking for more fish again. But for right now, we found a couple. We're going to turn right back around on them. I'll help you with that, Jake. Thanks, Dad. There you go. And we're going to try to catch as many out of this school before they really disperse. But that's the name of the game is find them, and once you find them, you should be able to put a pile of them in the boat. Got Keep them coming now, I got them. Pretty good one. Yeah, it's not bad. There he is. Nice. Not bad at all, Jake. All right, let me show this fish off. Look how absolutely gorgeous these fish are. Now one of the things about Atlantic salmon is they do get big. The one thing you got to understand about these inland lake Atlantic salmon is that this is 100% a stocked fishery. And so we put them in and we take them out. So you have the opportunity to catch a good sized fish, but this is what you're coming up here to catch, is these right here. Now these are from the 2021 year class of stocking. Uh, they grow pretty fast in this system, but there's a lot of fish in this lake right now about this size. And you tell you what, as far as it goes, I think it's one of the coolest fish that swims in fresh water. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems, your fishing equipment experts. Special considerations are provided by ProCure, ruthlessly effective bait sets. This week's episode was filmed on Torch Lake. Now, Torch Lake is located in the northern part of the Lower Peninsula, not very far from the town of Traverse City. Oh, my goodness. That one color has been good to me, man. It's been good to me. Well, that's going to kind of be the theme, I think, is I would describe today as uh, a slow pick. Um, not red hot action, um, but you go a little ways, you get a bite, you go a little ways, you get a bite, and uh, before you know it, you've caught quite a few fish. And I think the thing to keep in mind about Atlantic salmon is just how rare these fish really are. Um, there are just not very many of them places where you can catch them in the Great Lakes. Like I said, up at Sault Ste. Marie, the St. Marys River, there were some stocked in the Great Lakes historically. Um, there's a few in Lake Huron. You can get them in places like, oh, like Lexington and Alpena and Oscoda. They have a few. Uh, but there's not very many places a guy can go and actually catch an Atlantic salmon. Normally, if we get one bite, we end up getting, you know, two or three bites in the same little area. So we're just going to go ahead and land this fish, and then I'll worry about Take that. Take them one at a time. Yes, sir. So this guy's fighting pretty good here. Give me, give me a nice tussle. Keep him buckled up here. Oh yeah, I can see him down there now. A lot of, a lot of bright silver. I'm gonna bring him right up here by the kicker motor, Jake. Oh yeah, that's a good fish, Dad. They're so cool. What a cool fish. Nice, nice, nice. Let me try and get this guy out of the net here. Man, they are pretty. There's no, no doubt about it, they are gorgeous, gorgeous fish. I'm looking forward to putting some of these on the table. We've had Atlantic salmon before and consider them to be some of the best salmon out there, but we've never caught any little ones like this. These ought to be just like candy. All right, I'll grab mine here now. This one rod has been kind of the winner for me so far today. Might have to change out one of my other spoons for a different color, I don't know, but you know, one of the things is we're experimenting not only with the spoon size, but spoon color. Not just the front of the color of the spoon either, because in this case we're actually running some spoons that have copper back and some spoons that have silver back. And you know, I tend to try to gravitate towards those silver back spoons because of the forage base that these fish are feeding on. They're feeding on Cisco's out here, which is a silvery fish. And so to me that silver back would be kind of the matching of the hatch. But it seems like we're catching fish on both. But it's definitely something that if you come out here, you're gonna wanna have both of them in your boat. Let the fish tell you on any given day what it's going to take. I'm going to turn the boat quick. But we're going to end up super shallow. We just got up a little bit shallow. We're, what we're doing is we're kind of running this edge. And of course the edge doesn't run perfectly straight north and south. There we go, Dad. Down coming now. All right, we got our straight and narrow there. All right. Nice. After all that, it comes in the boat. Very, very cool. We'll call that a double header. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna show him off. This is a little bit smaller. One of the things on Torch Lake, you know, definitely wanna check the regulations before you come out. But as of right now, these fish have to be 15 inches to keep. You know, Prish probably is 15 inches, but he's in great shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this set back up. And basically what we're doing, it's a pretty simple presentation. We're using a spoon. Now I'll talk more about spoons later. We'll go ahead and we'll put that spoon back in the water here. And what I'm doing is I'm basically fishing a weighted line. This weighted line system that we're fishing is called leg core. And we're using relatively short chunks of leg core. Now these are segment chunks of leg core. And in this case, this is two colors. So what we're doing is we're fishing a one, a two, and a three color of leg core. Relatively high in the water column and we're trolling relatively fast. Now what we notice is these Atlantic seem to be higher up in the water column right now. It's early in the year, it's early April. And so the whole lake is about the same temperature. And even the river systems that come into this lake are coming in at cold water because the main lakes that are connected to Torch Lake are actually still frozen. And so the whole lake is the same temp and these fish end up coming up a little bit higher in the water column. They're spread out over this entire lake. So there really is no rhyme nor reason as to where these Atlantic salmon are. And so what we're doing is we're covering a lot of water by pulling planer boards and leg core trying to get in front of as many of these Atlantic salmon as we can. Special considerations provided by Abyss Battery. Power your pursuit. Special considerations are provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Yeah, baby, look at that. Woo! Travel Light Truck Campers presents the 411 on fishing. <laughs> now that's the object of our affections. Let's put him into the live well and we'll talk a little bit about the rod that we caught him on. Recently, Eagle Claw approached Jake and myself and asked us if we would help them to develop a line of trolling rods. Well, of course, we jumped at the opportunity. And what I'm going to talk about today um, is what we call the inline planer board rod. Now, there are two actions here. There's a 7'6 and there's an 8'6 rod. Now, Jake and I typically prefer the 7'6, but there's a lot of guys out there that look for a little bit longer rod, so there's both actions available. What I think is important in an inline planer board rod is that number one, you're going to own a lot of these, so they have to be affordable, and we definitely have an affordable rod here. Number two is they have to be durable. This needs to be a rod that you're going to buy this year, and you're going to fish it for 10 years and not worry about the, you know, the rod failing. And again, we have a very durable rod here. It's a composite construction, which means it's made from part fiberglass, part graphite. The other thing that I'm looking for is the strength of the power of the rod. The rod needs to be powerful enough to be able to handle things like inline planer boards. It also needs to handle things like deep diving crankbaits or maybe even snap weights in conjunction with deep diving crankbaits. If you're a trout and salmon guy, what about lead core? You're going to use this rod for pulling lead core as well. So the rod has to have enough backbone to handle all that weight, yet it still has to have a soft enough action that when you hook a fish, you have a great likelihood of landing that fish. Rods that are too stiff put too much pressure on the fish and often lead to fish escaping. So the inline planer board rod that we're talking about right now is called the Starfire and it also is telescopic. Why is that important? Well, most of us are fishing on 18 to 22 foot boats. And so in order to be able to stow our rods carefully in the boat without damage, we need a telescoping rod that telescopes down small enough to fit in our rod lockers. So the Starfire does it all. It telescopes down, it has the right action, it has the right power, and it'll work for everything that you're trolling in line planer boards, trout, salmon, walleye, you name it. It'll be a rod that you'll live by for years and years to come. It seems like these fish might even be, that's the second fish we've had up shallow. You know, we get the drone out today and you're gonna see this drone footage. You're gonna see exactly what we're talking about, how we're following this edge. This edge doesn't run perfectly north and south. It follows the bank. And this water is so clear out here on torches. When it comes up shallow, it's like a real light color. You can really see where it's shallow. And the boat might at times be in 80 feet of water, but my planer board might be in nine feet of water. That's how fast it comes up. I just slid a little bit shallower here and my inside three color went. So, and this fish was obviously up on the sand in this super shallow water up here. Woo! We're gonna have to show this one off. That is such a cool fish. And that clear water like that, yeah, that is I don't beautiful. know how it gets any cooler than that. It doesn't get much cooler than that, that's for sure. All right, let's show this fish off right here. They are beautiful. You're probably gonna get sick of me saying that on this episode, but they are really a cool species of fish, something different. It's one of the things about the state of Michigan. We travel a lot of fishing for and when we fish a lot of different states, obviously born and raised in Michigan. But the cool thing about the state is the variety that we have. So many different species of fish to go target. And then unique species 
like these Atlantic salmon right here. Definitely different. Not exactly a species of fish you can go to any lake and target. Let's talk a little bit about the history of Atlantic salmon fishing in Michigan, a little bit about the biology. Um, if you ask a fisheries biologist about Atlantic salmon, they'll say, oh boy, they're delicate fish, they're susceptible to disease, they're hard to raise in hatcheries, and that's true. And so the return on investment is not very good typically, but Michigan's done a nice job. Um, if you look at 2020 to current, they've stocked over 100,000 Atlantic salmon here in Torch Lake. That's a pretty substantial contribution, and they're raising these fish until they're about seven inches long, so the survivability is quite excellent. So in Torch, they've done really well. Now let's compare that to Lake Huron. They stock a lot of them in Lake Huron too, but Lake Huron is a big body of water and they just scatter to the wind, so to speak, and they're hard to find in catchable numbers. So a person could fish Lake Huron probably his whole life and never actually catch an Atlantic salmon, but if you come to Torch Lake and you put in the trouble uh, of working these fish, you will catch them and you can put that fish on your bucket list. Atlantic salmon are very cool and Torch Lake is a very cool place to find them. You know, one of the more important pieces of the puzzle today has been staying on that break, staying on the edge. And that edge doesn't run perfectly north and south. Basically, we're constantly driving around that edge. Now, the cool thing about this lake is it's so clear. You can very clearly see a defined line of where it gets up shallow. But what I'm doing is I'm using my kicker motor and I'm using my electric motor. I'm using two different motors to keep me going fast and to also control the boat. The kicker motor, I like to use a tiller style kicker motor. Now, this Suzuki kicker that I have right here is locked in place, meaning that it doesn't move. And then I'm using this electric motor as my directional control, so we can be exactly where we need to be to catch these fish. Special considerations are provided by the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association and by Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepare. Special considerations are provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing without a fish hawk is called boating. You know, one of the things about these Atlantic salmon out here on Torch Lake is they're a little bit smaller of a species of fish, and so what I like to do is run a little bit smaller spoon. When you think of trout and salmon fishing, you think of bigger spoons, right? You think of a mag spoon or a standard size spoon, but these fish are smaller, and so we're matching the hatch with a little bit smaller presentation. Now, this particular spoon right here is a Junior Streak Spoon by Wolverine Tackle. This particular leg core setup that I have right here is a three color of leg core. Now, I use this setup all over the country catching fish. If there's suspended fish over deep water, I love using lead core. But the main leader that I use on my lead core is 20 pound test fluorocarbon. It's heavy because I'm using this setup to catch big fish. When I'm fishing places like Torch Lake, I'm fishing a little bit smaller fish and I'm fishing a smaller spoon. And so what's important is you want to lighten your leader up so your spoon still has the correct action that you're looking for. Now, you have two options. One, you can either put a whole brand new leader on that system or you can do what I've chose to do. Basically what I've done is I've taken 12 to 15 pound test fluorocarbon and I've made a six foot leader. I clip that onto the actual snap swivel that's on my main leg core, run a six foot long leader to another snap swivel to my spoon. What that does is allows the spoon to have the right action with that lighter line and I don't have to necessarily change my leg cores out. Now when I'm done fishing torch, I'm going to take that leader, I'm going to put it on a leader reel and wrap it up and I can use the same setup for so many other species of fish. So if you're gonna fish these smaller spoons, if you hook it up to a real heavy fluorocarbon leader like we traditionally use on our lead cores, you're gonna be very disappointed with the amount of fish you catch. Lighten that leader up, give the spoon an action it deserves, and you're gonna catch a lot more fish. What a wonderful day. Great way to shake off the winter blues. Get fishing in the springtime. Man, it's nice. All right, Dan, I'll pull this board off for you. I'm not pulling too hard anymore. I think we might have tuckered him out a little bit. <laughs> we drug him around got, for a little he bit. He got drugged for a little while, yeah. He's still there, though. He's still there. Keep him coming. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. nice, nice. I'd like to see him again in another year. Cool. All right, we're just going to get him back in the water quick. You know, so what happened right there is we pulled through an area and we had two fish on at one time, which has been pretty common today. Whenever we seem to find these Atlantic salmon, we're finding them in pods. And so I dropped the waypoint on the grass 
And now we're gonna go ahead and get everything set back up again. I'm gonna turn the boat and go right back over that school of fish again. And hopefully we'll be able to pick one or two more out of that school before at that point we pretty much spread those fish out. Again, you're dealing with clean water here. And after the boat goes over them a couple times, that's pretty much it. Then you gotta go look for them again. But luckily there's plenty of pods of these fish out here. So we go looking. They're beautiful, beautiful Atlantic salmon. Well, lots of times you've heard us talk on Fishing 4 and one about how important it is to have quality hardware when you're fishing things like spoons. You absolutely have to have a good quality ball bearing swivel, not just a crane swivel, but a ball bearing swivel. But in this instance, because we're fishing such small spoons, you really need to downsize the swivel as well. Whereas salmon fishing, we'd normally run a number three swivel. I would recommend a number two or a number one swivel for these Atlantics with these small junior streaks and mini streak spoons. If you match that up to your spoon, you'll have maximum action and you'll have maximum fish catching ability. Literally both the outside and the middle board were going back at the same time. Maybe it was the same fish. <laughs> That's a very, <laughs> very hungry fish. <laughs> oh, now my inside board's going. I tell you what, Dad, why don't you take this one? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, this right. one, yeah, this give me the one that you got half reeled in. This one looks actually bigger, so I'm going to take the bigger <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, right. Double header. All right. Well, it's not a bad thing, is it? It's almost a triple header. All three lines on the side right there just went. Well, keep so. an eye on my side to see what happens. These fish seem to be over the open water here right now. I tell you what, let's just land yours. And then we can figure it out. That's a good idea. It's a pretty good one too, Dad. That's a good one, yeah. Get yours landed. Okay. Let me get him out of the net there. And then real I'm quick. gonna keep mine. Okay, I'm gonna be able to let you use your jinkers. Right here, Dad. There we go. Nice. Hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing 401. I hope you had a little fun today on Torch Lake catching some Atlantic salmon. Get up here and get you some of these. They are delicious on the table, and they are fun to catch. Closed captioning is provided by Precision Trolling Data. Fishing 411 TV is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, StarCraft Marine, Suzuki Marine, J Sporting Goods, Smooth Move Seats, Niagara Falls USA, Eagle Claw, Bill Lewis, and Yakima Bait Company. Pop it off. I'm still getting a lure out of the landing net. <laughs> the back of the boat looks like a bottom open. There's planer boards and lures and rods everywhere. 